Well, hello everybody. Mike with Spray Jones coming to you with another video. If you're new to clicking on these videos, I am the owner of Spray Jones and I do content on the spray foam installation market. We are a spray foam installer in Canada, sprayer on product, and I try to educate the consumer and the installers out there on the use of closed cell and open cell foam insulation. Today we're talking about whether or not you need a secondary vapor barrier at all with closed cell foam. Now that should sound like a no-brainer to most people, but there are quite a few people that still think out there that some type of sheet product or roll-on product should be used or could be good backup with closed cell foam. And let's take a look at the stats. This is the V5 wall tight, version five, latest, latest out there. And we've got a 7% open cell content and a 1.9% by volume water absorption rating. So very repellent towards moisture. But this is the this is the figure that everybody needs to see. 56 nanograms for a core sample, 50 millimeters thick, that's two inches. Five centimeters or 50 millimeters is two inches. And if you want to rate this in perms, one perm is 60 nanograms. So 60 nanograms is a vapor barrier, 59 is a vapor barrier, 58 is a vapor barrier, so on and so forth. So going from 60 downward is a vapor barrier, just like one perm is a vapor barrier, and then down, 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 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, so on and so forth, okay? So at two inches thick, they've rated the core of the product with no top and no bottom skins at just under 60 nanograms. Now, most people will sit there and say, well, Two inches of closed cell foam is what you need in order to get your vapor barrier. And then this freaks people out, whether you're an end user or the installer, saying, okay, two inches is a vapor barrier. Well, then what happens to every single spot that you've got that is not two inches? Does that mean water's just flowing right through it? No, and here's the reason why. So this is the older version wall tight back when it was blue, but they had a important uh, chart that I've shown in other videos. Water vapor permeates of the substrate versus substrate with wall type. Remember, 60 nanograms is one perm. So anything 69, 60, 59, so on and so forth is vapor barrier. So here, here's your OSB, your half inch OSB with one inch already at 33 nanograms. So half what is required to be a vapor barrier with one inch. So no, two inches is not needed. And if you have a spot that's a little bit low, it's not an immediate problem. You don't have to rip everything out or, or redo it or add huge copious amounts of foam. The reason being that people say the two inch is that under the worst possible scenarios and cases, two inches is gonna cover it. Like on gypsum, half inch gypsum, right? One inch isn't cutting it, right? 90 nanograms. You need to drop that down to at least 60 or less. So, you know, double it up, maybe you go from one inch to two inch, you go down to 45 or something like that. That's why most people are gonna talk about the two inches being necessary. Okay, so when you take a look at these isometric details, uh, 3D details, they show requisite amount of spray foam insulation, three inches of wall tight. This is a uh, basement detail. So poured foundation walls, framing inside, and then two inches of foam on concrete, three inches of foam up in the joist stand, and then if uh, thermal barriers needed, they're showing uh, spray on fire protection here. But the point being is that on the wall detail uh, that the engineers provided, no poly, no coating is shown as necessary up against the concrete or on the surface, the facing of the spray foam. So it is a standalone product and that's what we've come to know and understand. So the vapor permeates at two inches of foam on concrete, according to the previous chart, is more than enough to be a vapor barrier. So we do not need plastic before or after. Here is a built up corner detail. This is two by six. This is from the top looking down. Here is ganged together uh, lumber. It's important to understand that the caulking now they, they show the caulking just as a sealant for the assembly, but what we would do is we put it into each of the gaps, the cracks, right? The way it, it shows here, right? So just just take these beads and move them to the middle. 
we put the caulking in we flatten it out that way air from inside to outside is not bringing moisture with it so with spray foam you're not using poly to try and control any air which is a joke anyhow because you put uh, holes through it when you put the sheetrock on but it's important to understand getting your spray foam consistently into the corner as much as depends on you Sometimes it can be hard to verify that, but you've got to make changes to the details, have things cut back. If there was another stud here blocking your way that you couldn't rotate your gun in, you spray foam guys have got to get things modified. You've got to have them cut it open, remove it, uh, drill holes in it, and then sequentially fill the corner up so that you're making sure that you get spray foam all the way back into the corner. It can be tough, I get it. Uh, I know there's going to be a few guys that have failures from time to time because they thought they got it. I mean, we've even had that where we thought we got it and something got missed there was a little pocket in the corner and had to get some can foam in it but the point being is that no vapor barrier is shown in the assembly no poly right the spray foam at three inches thick in two by six framing is a standalone product you do not need an additional piece of polyethylene with it and then finally uh here's a roof detail cathedralized attic uh piece of backing has been provided to close off uh the rafter to the outside. This is the wall plate here if we scroll down. So here would be your two by six wall, exterior siding. Again, caulking is placed in where the doubles are to not allow air infiltration, exfiltration. The spray foam is gonna be built up and over the framing members, over the top cords, and no additional plastic or coating is necessary in order to provide the vapor protection. This is, these are the good old days when they were drawing four inches of wall tight. You know, we've sprayed uh, two, three, and four inches of closed cell foam in roofs. I've got the nastiest Saskatchewan winners with two inches of foam in a roof on retrofits um, for garages and all sorts of different things. And I've gone with three inches for years, and I've gone with four inches. Three inches when we can't get any, anything more in, and I've gone four where we have the ability to do whatever we want, but we've wanted to stop at a certain financial point, and four inches has been the amount. So this is a very good system. Uh, it works when everything goes well, when you've installed it properly. Um, even when you haven't done your job, effectively it's not a total and utter failure the way some people want to make foam out to be the boogeyman it's not you just go in add some more foam into the areas where you need to touch it up bring up the thickness uh, but caulking is a very incredible critical and important part of sealing wood frame construction when there's a direct path to the outside and to the next side right if this was not directly to the outside like it is in a foundation wall it wouldn't be necessary to do the caulking so just when you have a path to the outside so don't need to have uh vapor additional secondary vapor barriers with closed cell foam hope this answers it just a little bit more for you share like and subscribe and we'll catch you on another video soon